Hello, this is the second video for this problem. So there's already a video that has been posted that answers the first question for this problem. We calculated the average normal stress in cable BC of this concurrent force two-dimensional planar structure. This video is going to tackle the second part of this. And what this says is that experimentally, a one meter segment of cable, a one meter, assuming it's kind of like a braided cable, cable of some sort, not really given, but all right, so we've got some type of a cable and I've got a one meter specimen and we have placed a tensile force of 10 kilonewtons on the cable. And the result of those 10 kilonewtons of force is a deformation of one millimeter. I'm going to set up some symbols in this problem. I'm going to use um, a subscript of one for our test specimen. I'm going to use a subscript of two for member B, C. I'll turn the volume down on that layer so that we can see that heading. And very soon I'll hide that layer completely. You'll see why I'm writing directly on top of the other marks. All right. Um, and what I want to do is introduce a new way to think about this. So I'm going to say the deformation of the test specimen or member one is equal to one millimeter. Another way I can think about that, though, is saying one millimeter per one meter of length and per 10 kilonewtons of force. And we know that the amount of that deformation is going to be sensitive to those two quantities in the denominator, right? So if I have a cable that becomes twice the length, I'll double the deformation. If I get twice the force, I'll also double the deformation. Right, I'm going to express this idea. So I'm just going to take that one tenth and put it up here. So 0.1 millimeters of deformation per meter per kilonewton like that. OK, let's move over to member BC, which I'm calling also just member 2 so that I can use subscripts of 2. And in the last video, what we did is we took a free body of this cable. So I want to free that body from its supports, draw those two vectors. This vector down at the bottom we had solved as a magnitude of 23.09 kilonewtons. And that force vector represents the action of the ring at C on the cable. The ring pulls on the cable. This other vector at the top, of course, this is a two force member. So we've got an equal and opposite tensile force up at the top here, also 23.09 kilonewtons. And again, we want to maintain that accuracy of four sig figs throughout the problem so that we can express final answers to an accuracy of three significant figures. Okay, up here at the top, what that force is, that represents the effect of that eye bolt. This little hook looking thing here can be called an eye bolt. I like it's looking at you. It's got a little eye. Do, 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 do. That's not how eyelashes look. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad I'm not teaching biology. There we go. All right. So it's supposed to look something like an eye. That's the name. All right. And um, yeah, so we've got a free body that is now in equilibrium. 
Another thing that we want to do is find out the length of this cable. That's going to be important. And that length right there, I'll let you think through that trigonometry yourself. It's equal to six meters divided by the sine. Let me do that again. Six meters divided by the sine of 60 degrees. In other words, six divided by 0.866. So knowing that the sine of 60 degrees is equal to 0 0.866, that's a useful relationship to memorize. And the fourth sig fig here, by the way, is a zero. So you're still getting all the accuracy you need by typing in 0 0.866 to your calculator um, instead of typing in sine 60 degrees, which of course will give you all of the sig figs. Okay. And I think that's all we need from that base. So I'm going to go into my layers and remove some of those marks. Get some of these out of here. OK, that's looking pretty good. And at this point, we really just have these two pieces of information. So we have information about our test specimen on the left, and we're going to put information about member BC, which I'm also calling member two, on the right. And at this point, I can just use a simple ratio. So I can just say the deformation in member two is equal to, I'm going to go back to this relationship. How do I know that? Because it's the exact same table, same material. Same cable, it's the same material, it's the same cross sectional area. So I'm going to get a deformation of 0.1 millimeters per meter per kilonewton. How long is this cable? It's six divided by sine 60 degrees meters. How much force is in the cable? That's 23.09 kilonewtons of force. Cross that one out as well. Check out all your units. We're going to get this deformation reported to us in millimeters. To four sig figs, that would be 16.00 millimeters. Now that we know the deformation, we can answer the question from the problem. The question in the problem said, what is the strain, the axial strain in member BC? So I'll just change that to epsilon sub 2 equals what? Deformation, I mean, definition of strain is the ratio of deformation per length. 16 millimeters divided by, let's express this length in millimeters so that all of the units cancel out properly. There you see our funky units of strain, millimeters per millimeter. Multiply that out and we'll get our answer to the question posed which is a strain of 0 0.00231 millimeters per millimeter. That answer is OK the way that it is. I'm move this down out of the way just a bit. But the way that I would tend to express this would be to convert it to engineering notation. And the best way to write that is 2.31 e minus 3 millimeters per millimeter. It's positive because we have tension, and tension makes everything positive. That is the answer to the strain. Now, if you're watching this video and you're thinking to yourself, why not use the modulus of elasticity? Um, you can totally do that. You can totally do that. So another approach would be to come over here to our test specimen. We know the strain because that's deformation per length. We know the stress because that's N over A. So we can determine the modulus 
which is equal to stress over strain. After that, I can plug that into this problem. So I would know the modulus, I would know the normal force, I would know the cross-sectional area that lets me determine the stress. I know the original length. I can relate stress and modulus to get strain. And then I can use that strain relationship to relate the length to the deformation. So that would be an alternate approach to solving the same problem. Thank you for watching.